From time to time, I hear talks about vulnerabilities of blockchain, 50 plus one attack, and so on. Theoretically, a lot of things are possible, but which threat is real and which is just a wild theory? Hi, my name is Oleksi Konosevich and you're watching Blockchain State. In this video, we're talking about security and checkpoints on blockchain. What is 50 plus one or 51% attack? You see, the blockchain is a competitive system. No authority is responsible for keeping one ultimate truth, which ledger is correct. Instead, all network members are equal and anyone may present the network with their ledger version. And here applies the rule of the longest chain. When a node disseminates a new block or blocks, other nodes pick them up and add to their chain if the presented block or blocks constitute a longer chain. Of course, if the blocks there are valid, they are built according to the protocol requirements, such as absence of double spending of coins and so on. So normally when a node gets blocks from another node, it compares it with its own blockchain and if the received one is longer it adds to its chain. However, sometimes happen so-called forks. The fork is when a node gets a different block of the same number. For instance, the node has the last block number 100 with these transactions. But another node managed to overcome and presented block 100 with another set of transactions and block 101, which constitute the longer chain compared with the competing one. So, according to the rule, the receiving node drops its old block 100 and replaces it with the new block 100 and adds to it block 101. In this case, the actual transactions of the old block 100 are considered not happened. If Alice sent one coin to Bob and the new block doesn't contain it, this transaction never happened. In reality, this situation is rare as Alice's transaction will wait in the mempool, a storage where pending transactions wait their turn to be added someone will eventually pick it up in any of the next blocks. So if it's not in the new block 100, then it might pop up in block 101. The further the target block, which you want to rewrite in the chronology of blocks, the harder it gets to rewrite the subsequent chain. If you want to rewrite a long chunk of blocks, you will need enormous computational power. Realistically, something like that can happen if someone, presumably a coalition of nodes, get 50 plus 1 percent of computing power of all the network. Nevertheless, it doesn't mean they can now rewrite the ledger from any block in the past, as rewriting still requires computations spending a lot of time, on average 10 minutes per block, and burning much electricity. Keep in mind that the other 49% will not sit on their hands, they will keep mining, developing their chain of blocks, trying to make it longer. So the conspired group, while redesigning history will still need to catch up and overcome the upcoming blocks of the rival members. So in large mature blockchains, this attack is more like um, a theory that you can speculate about. To get your head more around, you can look through this website, crypto51.app. It shows the cost of 51 attacks. For example, in Bitcoin, it will cost you around 1.7 million US dollars per hour. How deep can you rewrite during one hour? Right, the depths of six blocks. 60 minutes divided by 10 minutes, it's six blocks. But remember that 
the others will keep mining as well. So during that hour, they will produce another six blocks. You just have a chance to get it done slightly quicker, having the advantage in 1% toward the rest of the network resources. Of course, you can try to attract more resources, but remember, it will cost you more. And realistically, where the hell will you get these resources? ASICs, specialized computers for mining, are not collecting dust on a shelf. They all are in mining rays, earning money every minute. The attacker will need to offer them something really attractive. Newly produced mining rigs are normally bought through pre-orders even before being produced. So, as you see, the concept of blockchain vulnerability sounds like a threatening thing, but the reality is too complicated for this to come true. Besides, you also must answer the question, why do you want to do this? Misappropriate some funds? But remember, the price of Bitcoin is based on the trust and belief of its stability. So, if you have enough power to disrupt it and you do this, you will end up having funny money that is worth nothing as no one trusts it anymore. The practice shows that the realistic depth for rewriting is six blocks and forks, as a matter of fact, due to the competitive nature of the technology happen all the time, usually not deeper than two blocks, but never deeper than six blocks. That is why it is recommended to wait about one hour after a transaction. For example, some large crypto exchanges wait two, three blocks to reflect changes in the user's balances. Finally, you can think about this problem from another perspective. If 51% decided to collide with the rest, what is it if not a legitimate will of the majority? This rule is the very basis of the technology. You accept it when you started using it. And finally, let's talk about checkpoints as I promised in the beginning. So, checkpoints are imposed by the community of wallet developers for some protection. You see, we now have quite a long chain of blocks in Bitcoin and it has never been forked dramatically. So, even though the theory says anyone can present the longer chain, we still understand that the current chain is very stable. Deep changes are unrealistic through a normal course of events such as fair competition. We still understand that some terrible things can happen even globally, but we know all the blocks and their hashes. So if one day we wake up and realize that some forces manage to tamper with a long chunk of blocks, we have the hashes of the original chain. They can play the role of the checkpoints against which we can check the originality and not to accept the drop of the original chain of blocks. These checkpoints exist in Bitcoin. So when you install your Bitcoin wallet, even if you haven't downloaded the blocks yet, your wallet have these checkpoints hard-coded. So when it starts synchronization, it will verify each block not only against the standard protocol rules of the blockchain, but also against these checkpoints. If any malicious node tries to feed you a wrong chain of blocks, your wallet will detect it in the latest checkpoint. Many blockchains use this method especially to protect the network in the early days of its development, when the hash rate is not high enough to be a protective force. To be clear, Bitcoin doesn't practice putting new checkpoints anymore as it also can be a source of risk because it gives a bunch of code developers some extra authority. But as a temporary measure to reach maturity, it can work well. For example, I figured out that Bitcoin contains a list of 13 checkpoints in the ledger. And the last one was at block 
29530 zeros in April 2014. In one of the stack exchange discussion, I figured that these checkpoints were chosen for a relatively low hash rate, so the attacker could theoretically start rewriting from these points. Because it was so long ago, nowadays it has become irrelevant. And so far, Bitcoin is the most stable and secure blockchain that since 2008 till this day has never experienced major disruptions that could undermine our trust in the technology. I hope now I have addressed doubts and explained why blockchain is the most secure data storage that humankind has ever seen. Cryptocurrency not only does not have its intrinsic value, as some say, but on the contrary, its value enormous. You can watch this video to know more about it, but meanwhile, that's it. See you in the next video. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video. In this way, you support the development of this channel. Thank you.